test, a test of the recording. Hello, hello, hello. Hi kids, welcome to another Sunday service. PTL Cat and I are so happy to see you guys today. And it's time for another Sunday story time. So um, yeah, get comfortable and let's get ready to listen to what the Lord has to say to us today. So um, as you guys probably noticed, yes, we the church is starting to reopen. But once again, we want to make sure that it is super safe, especially for all of the elderly, for people who are already sick, and also for young children like yourselves. And so we just want to make sure that the church is safe. So that way, when we all come together, um, we don't have to worry about um, getting sick or spreading germs. So please continue to pray for um, the Lord to continue to heal and for him to continue to be with the doctors um, during this time. Also, unfortunately, during this time, we have yet another crisis in our country um, where there is um, a big portion of our country folk, um, our, our black brothers and our black sisters who, um, you know, they have been treated unfairly for a very long time in our country. And um, so this is kind of a time of protesting and um, a time of unrest. But um, please take this time to pray that the Lord will really help all of us um, to ask for forgiveness and that we would really learn to love one another, even if we look differently or come from a different place um, that is not like our own. And so, um, you know, for yourself, please pray that the Lord will help you to be friends with everybody. And um, once again, congratulations to all of our students who um, promoted or graduated, uh, Ashley, Chloe, and Eileen um, went around to all their houses this week and got to drop something off for them. Um, and so I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And it's a small measure of us just saying congratulations to you. Sorry that, you know, normally during this time, you guys would be walking or giving speeches or, you know, dressing up or um, all that kind of stuff. But we still love you. And we just wanted to say we're super proud of you. All right. So who's ready for another message time? Because it is that time now. And um, for all of you guys who have been with us, um, we have been going through the book of Judges. That is right. And um, it's kind of a sad book because it continually talks about the failure of God's people. That's right. And um, we're starting to see that it's not just the people, but it's the very same judges that God is sending that, you know, they start to, I don't know, they started real strong, but then they start to decline a little bit. And so um, we're seeing that now that the judges are not necessarily um, like they save Israel and they bring peace to Israel, but they're not necessarily the greatest either, right? Well, last week we were talking about the end of Jephthah's story, who was our latest judge. And we were talking about how um, though he had paid, you know, like the highest cost to become the leader of Israel by sacrificing his daughter, uh, he was really, you know, Kind of his legacy of being the leader, leader of Israel was in um, being, you know, the start of a civil war. And um, and because of the war that had started um, through him and the Ephraimites, 42,000 Israelites died. So, um, yeah, that was kind of a sad story. And, um, you know, his that would be his legacy as a judge. That's the story that he would leave in Israel's history, that they had a civil war amongst themselves. It was not a time of peace. And in fact, it was also a very short-lived time, too. He was only able to lead for about six years. Um, so it probably, we talked about how it probably was not what he expected, and it probably wasn't what he wanted out of his time. Um, and so, you know, when we try so hard to make something happen, you know, it might not even be what God wants for us. But, you know, when we insist and we insist and we insist and we finally get our way, um, sometimes we find, you know, maybe it wasn't worth it. And maybe it was better just to trust in God and let God dictate instead of us telling God what we thought was good. Um, so that was what we learned from our story last week. 
we also learn that we can trust in God because for those of us who trust and love in God, we know, the Bible says from Romans chapter 8, that, you know, he works all things that are good for the purpose of those who are called according to his purpose. So people like you and me who believe in Jesus, um, God will work everything good for um, for his purpose. And so, you know, it's it's okay to trust God and it's okay not to bark up to him, hit orders about what you want. Um, you can trust him. So let's move on to today's um, judges. And we're going back to three minor judges and their names are Ibzon, Elon, and Abdon. And so if you could turn your Bibles with me to Judges chapter 12, verse 11 and 12, we will read those verses together. So go ahead, I'll give you some time. And um, I will be reading out of the ESV. Uh, hopefully that's the Bible that you have at home. Um, but let's read this together now. Okay, ready and go. Judges chapter 12, verse 11. After him, Elon, the Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel 10 years. Then Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried at Ijalon in the land of Zebulun. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thanks so much for today. Thanks for our kids. Thanks for this time where we get to listen to your message. Um, Lord, once again, there's always some wonderful things that you have to teach us during this time. And so help us to be, um, you know, open eared and open hearted. So that way we can be um, not just listening through our ears where you know, truth just kind of do, 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 and then comes out of the other side. But help us to um, really listen so that way it would go from our ears to our brains to our hearts and that we will really obey the things that you are telling us to do um, um, because you are our Abba Father and because you know what's best for us. And so please help us at this time. And once again, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would be with me, that you would help um, me to speak your words and not my own. We thank you in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen. All right. So in today's story, um, we come back to some shorter stories. Uh, there are three judges, like I said. Uh, last time it was two. Do you guys remember who the two small story judges were? That's right. It was Tola and Jair, right? Um, what do you guys remember about Tola and Jair? Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your brother or sister. Okay. Well, uh, if you remember, Tola and Jair also had very short tails. And so we're going to be learning about three other judges today that have very short tails. Um, but the judges that we uh, learn from that have shorter, shorter stories the Bible calls them minor judges, minor judges, okay? So we're gonna learn about three minor judges today. Our first judge of the day is named Ibzon. Everybody say Ibzon. That's right, Ibzon, okay? And it comes from chapter 12, verse eight. And let's read his story together, okay? Verse eight, it says, after him, uh, him being Jephthah, uh, Ibzon of Bethlehem judged Israel. Verse 9, he had 30 sons and 30 daughters he gave in marriage outside his clan, and 30 daughters he brought in from outside for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzon died and was buried at Bethlehem. So we get a few clues about who Ibzon was. Ibzon was a judge that was from the city of Bethlehem in the tribe of Judah, right? So if you remember, um, the Judahites uh, were some of the ones that kind of got it correct, right? And so uh, we know that Ibzon is from the tribe of Judah. Now the Bible says that Ibzon had 30 sons and daughters. Holy cow, that is a lot of children. Any of you guys have uh, 29, no, uh, 59 brothers and sisters? Anybody? Raise your hand. No, no, no. No, 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 nobody. Yeah, I don't know anybody who has 59 brothers and sisters, but Ibzon had 30 sons and daughters, 60 kids in total. 
Wowzers. And we see that as a leader, Ibzan knew how to make friends. So I don't know about you guys, but when I was a young kid, I really wanted to know, how do you make friends? Because I wanted to have lots of friends. Well, if you are wondering on how to get friends, uh, listen very closely because Ibzan um, has some very wise words for you. See, Ibzan was very good at making friends because he had this one skill. He knew how to share what was very important to him with other people. Now, you might be asking, Pastor Sam, what was so important that Ibzan shared? Um, I, don't, I don't know if I saw anything in the story. Well, let's read it back and let's see if you do see something that he shared, okay? In verse 9, it says, he had 30 sons and 30 daughters he gave in marriage outside his clan, and 30 daughters he brought in from outside for his sons. And so the, the thing or the people that he shared that was most important to him were... That's right, it was his daughters, right? He shared his daughters in marriage with leaders from outside his own clan of Judah. So not just in Israel's history, but you'll learn in world history that um, when you are a leader, like a king or a governor uh, of a land, and you share your daughter in marriage with the leader of the clan next door, um, it wasn't just sharing your child, but it was sharing also wealth and power. And so that makes it pretty important, right? That, um, you know, sharing your daughter in marriage with um, the, the next clan's uh, son means that you were trusting them with not only your child, but also with your power and with your wealth. Um, so that makes it pretty important, right? Um, but it didn't just, the sharing didn't just happen from Ibzan to the other people. The Bible says that um, he brought in daughters from other clans for his sons too. And so basically um, what would happen is that, you know, across all of Israel, uh, because he had 30 daughters, he would send all of his daughters throughout Israel to marry like the leader's sons throughout Israel. And the leaders throughout Israel would also send daughters to marry Ibzan's sons. And it would form this, uh, uh, this ally, this friendship, this partnership of leadership all across Israel. And so you might say that because uh, Ibzan knew how to share what was most important to him, he was able to unite Israel uh, under kind of this shared wealth and shared authority and power through the marriage of his uh, children. And so through Ibzan's ability to share what was most important to him, he had helped Israel to kind of become a united nation. Question. Dun, dun, dun. What is something important to you that you can share with others that would help people to trust you and might also help you to make friends? Is it a toy? Is it a, a book? Is it a story? Is it a secret? Is it, um, yeah, what is it? There's a lot of things that we can share, but what's something that's important to you that you can share um, that would help you to make friends? Well, our second judge of the day, um, his name is Elon, and he has the shortest story of all of the minor prophets, and um, we're definitely not told much about him. Let's see if there's anything that we can kind of like glean or scoop up, okay? So um, starting in verse 11, let's read it together. It says, after him, Elon, the Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel for 10 years. Then Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried at Aijalon in the land of Zebulun. So that's our verse of the day. Um, but yeah, you know, it doesn't even tell us how many children he had or, you know, sons or daughters or marrying or donkeys or cities or anything like that. He just says, you know, he was the dude. So 
If we do a little bit of searching, you know, with our detective's caps on, what can we see? Well, Elon was from the country and the tribe of Zebulun, okay? And so um, that's, the, that's one thing that is pretty plain to see. And we know that he ruled for 10 years. But if we dig a little closer, we can see that Elon's name in Hebrew means oak tree. How many of you guys know what an oak tree is? Um, amongst the oak tree, if you do your Googling on what an oak tree symbolizes, um, an oak tree means that it's power, it has, um, it can survive, and it has ancient wisdom, which means the oak tree is kind of the elder tree of all trees, right? Um, they've been around the longest. They've been able to um, stay you know, powerful, and they've been able to survive for a very long time, to live for a very long time. And because it's been able to live for a very long time, it's very, very wise. And so um, perhaps in Elon's tenure as leader over Israel, um, there's, there's, you know, more to a name than just the name. Maybe the meaning means that what he provided for Israel was um, this long living wisdom and power. And so, um, you know, like if we can think of kind of, you know, Elon's um, influence being, you know, um, amongst his people, then while he was the leader, he brought a time of just long standing authority um, and, and just um, survival and wisdom to his 10 years. So that's, that's a pretty good time for Elon, I would say, wouldn't you? And our final judge today uh, is named Abdon. And Abdon's story gives us a little bit more than Elon's story. And so let's learn about Abdon today. Verse 13, it says, After him, which was Elon, uh, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys, and he judged Israel for eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, died and was buried at Pirathon in the land of Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. All right, so we see right off the bat that Abdon, um, he is an Ephraimite, um, and he is from a city called Pirathon, which is in the hills that is on the border of Ephraim and Manasseh. Um, and so what else does the Bible say about this man? Well, the Bible says that uh, this dude also, um, like Ibzon, had lots of sons, okay? The Bible says that this dude had 40 sons and 30 grandsons and as many as 70 donkeys. That's a lot a lot of donkeys. Now, if you remember, when we learned about Jair, we learned that he and his children um, used their wealth and their power properly by helping the people um, that they ruled over. And um, if you remember, uh, Jair had uh, 30 sons on 30 donkeys and 30 cities, right? Um, well, Abdon's family uh, was similar to Jair's family, but it was not only, it's not only that they ruled properly over the people, but the story, because it says that he not only had uh, 40 sons, but that his ruling even lasted and the legacy of that ruling lasted past his sons and even into the generation of his grandsons means that um, that not only did they maintain the stability in, uh, or not only were they proper uh, in ruling Israel, but they maintained stability for a very long time. Um, they were faithful to what they were being called to do uh, as the rulers of Israel. Um, if you, uh, if your family um, is able to rule well uh, it, uh, somewhere, uh, if you are able to rule well, but then, you know, your sons kind of like muck it all up, then that's not very long. If your sons are able to rule well, that's not bad. But if, you're, if your rule um, is stable and is good and is wise and it can extend all the way to your grandsons, then 
I think it's safe to say that you've done a pretty good job of making sure that you taught them well. So yeah, Abdon did a great job of teaching the next generation. Question, what is something important to you that you would want to teach people in the next generation after you? Hmm? Take a second to think about it. Talk to your parents, maybe your siblings. What is something important to you that you would want to teach people in the next generation after you, the people who are younger than you? Well, thanks to these three judges, Israel would be stable and peaceful for over 25 years. And so though their stories were minor um, together, their efforts did not go to waste. They kept Israel safe for a pretty good time. And with that, we come to the end of our story today. Um, but what can we learn from today's lesson? Well, the first thing that we learned through um, Ibzan is that sharing is caring. It's good to share. Um, how many of you guys would say that you're good at sharing? You know, even as an adult, it's hard for me to share sometimes too. Well, we would not be able to survive without sharing. Um, sharing helps us to find things in common so that we can love each other well. So sharing is super important. And without sharing with others and without what other people share with us, um, we wouldn't be able to survive. Have you guys ever thought about the things that your mom and dad gives to you? You know, in reality, they're not just giving things to you. They're sharing things with you. If your mom and dad and your family didn't share things with you, like your food, the clothes on your back, the money that they make from their job, the house um, that you live in, would you be able to survive? Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that we share, right? Um, you know, as kids, maybe it's cars, clothes if you have brothers and sisters, toys, food, books, friends, the house, um, for maybe our girls, maybe our play jewelry, you know, when you get money for New Year's, um, a classroom with all your classmates. Those are a lot of things like physical things that we share, but other things that we share would include maybe our stories, you know, things that we go through. Um, the fact that we're all human, right? So um, right now, you know, a lot of people are fighting because they want to be counted as human too. And unfortunately, there's a population of us, there's a portion of us, the adults who, you know, don't feel like these people are human. But, you know, um, we are all human. And, and you know why? It's because the final thing that we share with one another, we all share the fact that we bear the image of God, our creator. And so all of us are precious if we bear um, the image of God. And so we share a lot. You know, we're not the only ones that share with one another. God shared with us too. And he shared the most important thing with us. He shared his very own son. Um, if you look at John 3, 16, and it's a verse that all of us know, um, but it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He shared his only son with us that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so God, knowing that we needed help, he shared his son, Jesus, with us. And Jesus um, shared with us. And what he shared with us was his very life. In fact, not only did he share his life, but he gave his life for us. So that way we could be in a relationship with our God, the Father, as well. And so God, you know, Jesus and God, the Father, they both shared so much with us. And really, if they did not share, we would not be able to survive. From Abdon's story, we learned that, you know, it's important to, you know, not just do things well yourself, but it's good to teach what you've learned um, to other people, you know, like he taught his sons and his sons taught his grandsons. And through the efforts of all these, you know, this generation of people that were taught um, because of Abdon, um, he was able to effectively rule and, you know, bring peace to Israel for many years. And so, um, you know, as kids, you know, maybe you think, but I'm so young and what can I teach to people? Um, I'm the one who should be taught. I'm still learning things, Pastor Sam. Um, in fact, you're teaching us things. And to that, I would say, yeah, sure, you're definitely right. Um, but just because I'm teaching you and you're learning, that doesn't mean that you can't in turn teach someone else. Now, you may not teach someone else through your words, right? Um, but 
there was a nun uh, a while ago who lived. Her name was Mary. And this nun named Mary said something very important and deep. What does she say? She says, we must teach more by example than by word. So what does that mean? That means, okay, fine. Maybe you can't tell somebody to, to share and they learn it and they say, okay, and then they start sharing, okay? Maybe it's much better if you show them how to share by sharing. And so um, it's hard to teach somebody to do something that you yourself will not do. And so maybe you want to teach somebody to share. What's the fastest way to show them and teach them how to share? That's right, it's to do it yourself. And so, um, yeah, you know, it's important to teach things to other people, but um, oftentimes it's better to show by example than to speak it out of words. So you can also teach people through your example. So through the story of uh, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, um, let's pray that the Lord will help us to remember that it is wise and caring to share and it is important if we want to have good relationship with others. Let's pray that God will give us the courage to share what is important to us with others so that we can teach others through God's example, see? Um, so it's not so much that um, it's us, it's, it's God that shows us because he shared first, remember. Um, and so let's teach um, other people through um, our example because we follow God's example. And let's also thank him for sharing what was most important to him, um, which is his only son, Jesus, um, because we get to enjoy our relationship with him because of Jesus. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for today. And we learned about three um, wonderful judges today that had shorter stories. So they're the minor judges, but we learned about um, Ibzon, Elon, and Abdon. And we learned that sharing is really important and we share a lot more than we know. Um, and so um, we, we learned that if we do share, then um, it's wise and we can, you know, it's a good way to have long relationships and it's a good way to live, um, you know, a very uh, long and peaceful lives if we're able to share with one another. And we also learned that, um, you know, we can teach other people, um, not just through the things that we say, but also the things that we do in showing them an example. And so, Lord, help us to be wonderful examples, not of ourselves, because um, sometimes we're, we don't want to share, but help us to share and to show people um, that we care about them through sharing because of the example that you gave us, because you shared with us your precious son on the cross to die for our sins first. Um, and so, Lord, help us to share that same love and that same care for other people, especially during this time where um, people need for us to share our love with them. Um, and so help us to be ever loving, ever caring, um, and ever examples of who you are as our loving Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Did you guys like that story? I really like that story this week too. And so I hope that you guys will remember this week to continue to share and teach by example. Okay. So um, we'll see you guys. Um, and we love you and we miss you. And we look forward to the day where we can all be back together. Okay. Bye.